Hi, I'm Gene Cavassis. Today I'm going to show you how to build this vintage looking recording sign. It's easy and it's a lot of fun. Or you could do it like a on the air sign. So let's get started. I always start out by sketching up my project. It helps me work out the dimensions. Now on this I'm going to cut two pieces of half inch by three inch by 18 inches of MDF and three pieces of quarter inch the same size. Borrowing one of my wife's Tupperware lids I'm going to uh, get those circles in there and coming in four inch I'm going to mark these down. Now utilizing some 3M poster double stick tape. This is a removable tape and it's easy to set down and peel off. This is a great way to put all your panels together so I can cut them all at the same time. Once I finish cutting those round pieces I'm going to separate them and on the two half inch pieces, mark those four inch marks, but I'm also gonna come back and trim an area out about an inch and a half down. After cutting those, and I also cut a quarter inch off the bottom of them, that's gonna allow me to put the back on and have a flush piece to that. Now I'm gonna take the last 18 inch piece of quarter inch and cut those for the back. Now a company called Starbond sent me some samples to try out of medium glue. They also sent a medium thick and this is good for filling in large cracks. They sent a thin glue as well as a medium clear. Now I'm going to try this out on this project and they also sent me a can of spray activator which helps speed up the process. So after marking off what I need here I'm going to start out with some of this medium glue. Now from the best I understand this is basically a lot like super glue. It dries extremely fast and bonds very well. Using the activator, I'm going to spray that against the other surface and then take the two and put them together. I have to be careful that I still have that quarter inch on the bottom. I'll set a few weights on this and wait for that to dry. So while that one's drying, I'm going to do the same thing to the next piece. I can already start to feel that setting up so holy smoke this stuff really starts to bond quickly take the weights off of this one. Oh my word this stuff is done I mean we're talking less than a minute this is really set up I couldn't pull that apart if I wanted to I'm really for the most part so far really impressed with this product what I'm liking about this is, unlike using a normal wood glue, I can spray this material on and keep the project going, not have to wait overnight for it to dry. The activator is an interesting process, but it, everything seems to be working really well. Look how well this has already set up, and I'm ready to keep it going. I cut a couple of small pieces I'm going to put down and this is going to help me to create the light box in the center of this. I'm also going to cut some of the quarter inch MDF scrap in three quarters of an inch and set that down in front as well. This helps to frame in the uh, sign panel. Taking it to the sander, I'm just going to smooth out some of these together so it has a nice, easy surface to adhere to. Now, I'm going to mark a 
couple inches in on each side, drill those out, and then basically cut keyhole patterns for installing it against a wall. I picked up a 10 foot roll of aluminum from Home Depot and I think it was less than nine dollars. It's very thin material but it's going to be perfect for this build. Between the MDF and the aluminum that I purchased you've got easily enough to build three of these lights and I'm going to go ahead and build two of them. I'm going to take the snips and I'm going to cut this pattern out, but I'm going to allow about a half inch over. This gives me a little room to route off those edges once I've finished cutting it out. And this way when you put it on, you don't have to be exactly perfect. set this down and once again using the medium clear glue I'm going to apply just an even bead and kind of put some around the, the top. You don't have to smear it on just make sure you put the applicator on the other surface flip it over and you're not going to get a lot of tries at this so try to get it lined up which is also why I allowed to cut a about a half inch of overage. Once I have that on I'm going to kind of make sure it's down and do the exact same on the other side. Once I have that down, I'm going to take this over to the router table and using a flush bit, I'm going to just round or smooth off these edges. Now I'm going to cut a four inch wide piece that's going to make the curve on the front of this. I came in about a half inch and using a pair of duckbill pliers I'm gonna make the bend. Now don't let these duckbill pliers you know keep you away from this project. I think I paid less than ten dollars for these at Harbor Freight. I'll put a link in the description below as to where you can get them. So I measured that around Take these pliers again, give it a decent bend on the back side, and now once again using the medium glue. Now you could also use the thick glue on this and it would probably give you a little more time for set. I used the medium glue and I had to move very quickly. Now this one's cut to size, but it fit really nicely. And after I kind of made sure it was all down, I came in and I filed those edges smooth. I also took some silver spray paint and sprayed the back side of the door and the inside of the light box. The silver will help to reflect the paint or the lighting. Now I'm going to go ahead and drill a hole in the center of this. And then going back over to the router table, I'm going to put some painter's tape down on the front of this to help prevent it from being scratched up and then set this down over the hole I drilled and using that same flush bit I'm going to follow that around and cut out the inside. That made a really nice cut and worked well. Now I'm going to cut a one inch band of some of this aluminum I'm going to wrap it around the sides of this, mark it, and also use those duckbill pliers to, uh, to put a bend on that as well. This is going to help me to create some of the decoration for the front of this. I'm going to do it on both sides. Now, using some copper adhesive tape that I had picked up for actually shielding the inside of an electric guitar, I'm going to take and cut a quarter inch strip off of this. And that's going to leave about a two inch strip and I'm going to take these pieces of aluminum that I had uh, put on and stick this down. Once 
once I have both sides of this stuck down, making a nice copper stripe on that, I'm going to come back with those aluminum pieces that I cut, line them into the center, and click those into place. This is going to help with the decorative piece of this and give it just a little bit of an edge so it doesn't look like just decal. Now I'm going to take those two strips that I had cut off each of the copper pieces and run those down through the center. That's going to give me the look I want. And then on the piece of aluminum that bent around, I will drill and put a pop rivet in each of those that helps to lock down the back side. Now, the plastic I picked up from Home Depot is some eighth inch, and I'm going to cut two pieces, two and a half inches by ten inches. Going to the computer, I'm going to quickly lay out what I want for the face. I did three different samples. But I'm going to start using the one that said recording. Now this is just printed on a kind of a glossy paper, fairly thin, and it's white paper, but it's translucent enough that light's going to shine through that just fine. I'm going to take and sandwich between the two pieces of clear and then set that down in the light box. Now I'm going to use some LED lighting, an on-off switch, a 9 volt battery connector, some switch connectors, and a 9 volt battery. This roll comes with about 16 feet so there's well enough to do three more signs out of that if you like. It's got a sticky back that makes it really easy for setting the lighting in. So I ran this around the edge of this and I actually came back around and ran it around two times. This is giving me a good amount of lighting in there. It's got marks for where you can cut it. Now I decided to cut a hole in the back for the battery to fit in. And I would recommend you do this before setting the plastic and the lights in. I had to do a lot of time cleaning all that out. I'm also going to drill a hole with a Forster bit to the bottom side of this because that's where I'm going to want to install the on-off switch. I'm going to run my wires through and connect those connectors up to the switch. Let's test this out. That's going to work. So basically you have a 9 volt battery, you have your 3 prong switch, and then the light source. So the 9 volt positive will run to the center lug, the end lug or the switch lug to the positive side. Then from that copper side to the negative and then also to the light. I'm going to use a little bit of metal polish and rub down all the aluminum on this and I brought it to, out to a really nice, almost a mirror shine. I'm going to set the back into this and test it out. That looks pretty good. I'm kind of happy with that. Now I put some of the other faces in this as well to try it out. You're unlimited what you could, could do with it. On the second light, I used some scrap PVC I had from another project. It cuts real easily and sands real easily. And I just used it like a template around the round corners. And it accepts paint real well. So after cutting three bars for each side to the curve and one across the bottom and some decoration, I started gluing some of these down to give it kind of that art deco style. And using that same glue from Starbond, which seems to work really well. A little bit of polish, and I'm really happy how both of these lights turned out. If you like this video and you like doing other DIY projects, click on one of these other videos off to the side, and uh, as always, I'll see you soon. So that looks pretty cool. I'm kind of happy with that.